Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I wanted to review uh, Vertigo uh, by W.G. Seabald. This is the fourth of Seabald's novels I've read and it's he only wrote four novels which makes me a little sad but it was a really great reading experience for me and so I wanted to attempt to uh, share my thoughts about Seabald's novel with you here. I'm laughing because me describing uh, W.G. Seabald's novel is always uh, really difficult. He is one of those writers whose books uh, I love but don't know that I fully understand and I'm not sure that anybody other than Seabald does. Maybe Seabald and Mark Nash uh, understand exactly what Seabald was up to uh, in, his, in his writing. But I, I love uh, his books and so I want to attempt to share my thoughts about Vertigo uh, with you here. So there are three kind of, three of Seabald's novels are kind of related in the sense that they involve following a narrator writer on journeys. Uh, in uh, Rings of Saturn, he's walking around a part of England. Uh, in uh, The Immigrants, he's essentially following the lives and traveling and learning about uh, several people uh, who uh, left Germany, Austria during World War II uh, and the Nazi takeover. And in Vertigo, uh, this writer narrator is following in the footsteps of other writers. He follows in the footsteps of Stendhal. Um, he at least connects to the story of Casanova and he follows a journey taken by Franz Kafka uh, in Italy. And in doing so, the past of these people intrudes on his present and affects his sense of reality. And one of the things that makes Vertigo to me different than Rings of Saturn uh, or the immigrants is that here we find the narrator uh, writer, uh, the person we associate with Seabald, to himself be in kind of a state of mental unrest or crisis. It is though he is standing, you know, on the edge of a of a high cliff, uh, looking down, in danger of plunging into, you know, some kind of madness where he loses himself and, you know, uh, becomes too occupied by thoughts of the past. Uh, he travels around, uh, like I said, he travels from Austria to Italy. He has all these experiences. He goes to places these author, authors have gone. He sees things they've seen. He inhabits their thoughts while also his thoughts. And this goes on in this kind of like near, I think, idea of perhaps madness or instability goes on until he goes back to his own hometown, which seems to uh, ground him and remind him of his own identity, whatever uh, that may be for, for good or for bad. Now, that's what I believe the essential plot of the book uh, could be described at. But you need to know, when I talk about him going back to his hometown, it's not a pleasant trip. It's not something where, oh, I, he sees old friend, he sees old friends or family members and he goes, oh, this is who I am. I'm sorry. It's not like that at all. He still is, always feels like he's right on the edge of this kind of plunge into madness. And I think, that's why the book is titled Vertigo, because it's the reading experience is supposed to give you the feeling of inhabiting that thought of somebody who is uh, literally right on the edge, uh, who is uh, in danger of losing themselves in some way, of spinning out of control. It's a dizzying uh, book to read without being difficult to read and without uh, sacrificing anything in terms of the beauty of the writing. It's beautifully written, but it gives you that really kind of unsettling uh, feeling where you as the reader uh, never feel like you're on solid ground. You as the reader are never sure exactly uh, what everything means. Now, that's me and maybe somebody else uh, can explain it better, but that would be my explanation. One of the things I find in reading Seabald is that I am, uh, when I read his, his, his books, I'm consciously, subconsciously remembering images and logging them away and noticing recurring images and ideas, and, and Vertigo has a lot of those. Uh, comparing institutions, buildings, to ships at sea, uh, the water in general, uh, the, the year 1913, frescoes painting on the wall by certain artists that recur over and over again and are referenced over and over again, uh, pyramids, uh, doppelgangers, you know, pairs of people who may, and doppelgangers who may or may not be just like one another, or just pairs of people who might be quite opposite. In one case, actually twins. These things come up over and over again. And one of the things that I enjoy most about Seabold is that I'll 
be reading along and think to myself, wow, that reminds me of an image that I read somewhere. And then I'll ask myself, was that something that was in Seabald? And oftentimes it was, that those images that he's created just become stuck in my head and then he brings them back over and over again. To what end and to what purpose, I will admit I'm not always sure of the significance of these things other than, uh, you know, uh, creating connections uh, between ideas, images, and in vertigo, creating those connections and ideas, I think, to put you off balance, to create this sense uh, of somewhat uh, uh, dizziness. So when reading Seabald, I think the greatest challenge is to not uh, read with the determination to understand exactly what's happening. To me, it's more of an experience than uh, a puzzle to be figured out, even though my mind uh, works to figure out the puzzle every single time, um, whichever Seabald novel I'm reading. This one seemed a little bit more mysterious and a little bit less uh, to have a unifying uh, plot than the others, but I, I still really, really enjoyed it. So this may not be a particularly helpful re <laughs> helpful review. Uh, it may not tell you a lot about the novel, but it hopefully tells you a little bit about Seabald. So I tried to write down kind of what it was like to, I tried to describe, you know, what I felt when I read Seabald. So here we go. This is the best I can do, the experience of reading Seabald. To me, reading Seabald is like being in that period of kind of pre-sleep when you're dozing off and you're very comfortable and you're very content and images and ideas are flashing through your brain and then being woken up and not being sure if the things you saw, if the experiences you had were real or a part of a dream and then trying to determine the significance of the images that you had, the feelings that you had while you were in that kind of state of dozing off pre-sleep. Only it's not your dreams and thoughts that were flashing through your head. It's Seabald's ideas and dreams that are flashing through your head. Anyway, that's the best I can do. I'm pretty sure that doesn't make any sense. I hope if you've never read W.G. Seabald that you will pick up uh, Vertigo or The Emirates or Rings of Saturn, which is actually my favorite, or, or Austerlitz, uh, and, and, and give his writing a chance. It's not, he's not difficult to read. It's not intentionally obscure. It is just an experience, and one I think that uh, I wish a lot of readers would have, maybe so they could explain uh, what Seabald's up to to me. Anyway, there you go. There's my review, such as it is, of W.G. Seabald's novel, uh, Vertigo. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below, and as always, thank you for watching.